Hello, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Eh, hey, I hope you are fine. Apa khabar pelajar semua? Cikgu harap semua sihat ya. Eh? So today, uh, as last week, we continue our revision with physics module Chakna. Okay, so I hope you are ready with your module. And we are begin with question 6 up to question 10 today. If we have enough time, we try to finish until question 10. Uh, if not, uh, we will continue the remaining question in the next lesson. Okay, before that, can you hear me clearly? Boleh dengar cikgu tak? Okay, and as usual, you can respond me in the private chat or else who want to join me in the studio, you can click on this uh, StreamYard link. So, you can accompany me up here. Okay, siapa nak teman cikgu duduk atas ni boleh klik dekat link yang stream, uh, stream, uh, link stream yang, yang cikgu hantar. Okay, thank you Ivy. Okay, and after the lesson ended as usual as last week, uh, you go back to this video later on and write your name and your class in the comment section. Okay, uh, so if you are good to go without further delay, let's begin our class today. All right. So do you have your module chart now in front of you, class? Okay, so uh, we begin with question six. Okay. So this is what we have in question six. Okay, so the question is, first they give you diagram 8.1. Okay, so in this diagram, it shows a light ray entering a glass prism even the refractive index of the glass is 1.51, okay? So, the first question A, what is meant by refractive index? And question B1, you are asked to calculate the critical angle of the glass prism. So, let's take a look at this diagram 8.1. Okay, you can see a prism. This is a 45, 90, 45 glass prism and this is show the incident ray it is incident at 90 degree with a normal and it reached this boundary and given the angle here is I, okay? So what is refractive index, everyone? How many of you have tried this question? You can respond to me by either typing your answer in the live chat or if you want to join me in the conti, you can click on the screen, uh, stream yard link, which I pass, uh, which I paste in the comment section. Uh, boleh click dekat link uh, stream yard ini. Kalau internet kamu okay, you can click on this link. Okay. So what is meant by refractive index? Everyone, can you please respond? Apa maksud refractive index? What is meant by refractive index? I'm waiting for your answer. Please answer in the private chat. Or who want to join me in the studio again, you can click on the StreamYard link. Okay, anyone? What is meant by refractive index? So it is the ratio, okay? Ratio of sine I to sine R. Hmm, who said? Uh, on great scene, Richard is Tanjin J, right? Ability of an object to bend light, uh, Jin J, that is a very common uh, to general. You have to be more specific. Okay, I will say ratio of sine I to sine R. Okay, this is acceptable. Okay, but you must add sine I where? In the less dense medium and sine R is in the denser medium. Okay, must mention sine I is in the less dense medium while sine R is in the denser medium. Okay. So this is uh, the answer I write for you here. It is a ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium. Okay, this is the general definition for refractive index. Or it also can be written as ratio of sine i in a less dense medium to sine r in a denser medium. Okay. And next question, B1, 
calculate the critical angle of the glass prism. Okay, calculate the critical angle of the glass prism. So how to find the critical angle of the glass prism? Anyone? How to find the critical angle of the glass prism? Okay, before that, do is my slide uh, appear clearly to you? If it's not clear, you can adjust the resolution by click the resolution to 720 pixel. Okay, so how to find the critical angle of the glass prism? You are given the refractive index N is 1.51. So how do we relate the refractive index with the critical angle? What formula to be applied here? Class, apa formula nak pakai di sini? Calculate the critical angle. You are given the refractive index N 1.51. So what formula relate N with C? C is the critical angle. Do you remember the formula? Apa formula nak guna? Okay, we are using this formula. Okay, where N equal to reciprocal of sin C. Yes, very good, Bin C. N equal to 1 over sin C. Okay, so N is given 1.51. You just do the substitution. Okay, so 1.51 equal to 1 over sin C. So tell me what is the value for C in degree. Okay, what is the critical angle of the glass prism? Okay, you may press your calculator and find the value for C class. We are now having 59 person with us. Siapa yang tak bangun lagi tu boleh kejut kawan kamu eh. So what is the value for the critical angle C? Yes, uh, Xuan Ling, it is 41.47. Very good. Don't forget to write the unit which is in degree Celsius. Okay, so this is the solution. Okay, the formula 1 over sine C, N is 1.51. So C is 41.47 or you may also write A as 41.50 degree. Okay, very good. Okay, let's move to the next question. Okay, B2. Okay, now you have to compare the critical angle C in A1 with angle of incidence. So the angle of incidence, you compare with the critical angle. Angle of incidence is given here I and just now we calculate the critical angle as 41.47 degree. Alright, so how do we compare C and I? How to write the comparison? How to write the comparison? Which one is greater? Which one is smaller? Or are they the same? Are they the same angle? Or which one is bigger? Which one is smaller? You may write your answer in B2. Okay. I greater than C. Vinci said I greater than C. The rest of you, what do you say? So the answer is yes, I greater than C or you can say C less than I. Okay, I greater than C or C less than I. Okay, I greater than C. Oh, very cute. Is this your dog, Vinci? <laughs> what is its name? Is it he or she? <laughs> okay, then B3. Okay, let's take a look at B3. Name the phenomenon that has occurred to the light ray. So what phenomenon involved here, class? As I is greater than C. Angle of incidence greater than the critical angle. So what phenomenon will occur when I greater than C? Okay, please name the phenomenon now for B3. Yes, what is it? 
Okay, so the phenomenon is, yes, very good, Jinjit. Total internal reflection. It is T-I-R. Total internal reflection. So the phenomenon when I greater than C is total internal reflection. Okay. Who is this Gap Chris? Who are you, Gap Chris? Can you identify yourself? Okay, total internal reflection. Very good, everyone. Okay, now we proceed with before. Okay, state one condition for this phenomenon to occur. Okay, just now you named the phenomenon as total internal reflection. So what is the condition in order to let total internal reflection to occur? Okay. Cheng Guang Heng, I need to copy page 46, uh, 6A, 6A. Uh, later, I show you again 6A, okay? Uh, we we write the answer for B4 first. Later, I go back to the first slide, okay, Guang Heng? Okay, just now state one condition for this phenomenon to occur. So, what phenomenon it must uh, obey, class? Okay, the answer is the same as above. In order to total internal reflection to occur, I must be greater than C. Okay, yes. Or you can say light must travel from denser medium towards a less dense medium. Yes, correct, Bin C. Very good. Uh, Chan Min Suan, yes, I greater than C. Or you can say light must travel from a denser medium towards a, de a less dense medium. Okay. From denser to less dense, uh, Jinjie, for total internal reflection to occur mean. Now the light travel in the prism, it travel to the air. Okay, it travel to the air and now I is greater than C. So here total internal reflection occur. Okay. Okay, okay so uh, Guan Heng, I show you back... Uh, the first slide A. So this is the meaning of refractive index and this is how we calculate the critical angle. You can take the screenshot first okay and later you can copy back the answer okay. You can screenshot this slide and later you can copy back the questions all right. Okay so let's move to the next slide. Okay uh, question C. Okay, now question C. Okay, question C, you are given this diagram, diagram 8.2. Okay, so this is our related diagram. Uh, what is the name of these things, class? What is the name of this optical device? Okay, this is what we call as a binocular. Okay, binocular is used to observe a distant object. All right. Uh, so it shows a prism binocular. And the position of two prisms on one side of the binocular are as shown. So you can see there are two prisms placed here in the position as shown in the diagram. So on this diagram, you are asked to draw the ray path entering both prisms. And in your drawing, indicate the direction of the ray path. Direction means you have to show the arrow in which direction the light travel to. So this is the eye of the observer and down here is our objective lens where the light from the object enter from. So now you please draw the light, enter the objective ray and how it will be moved along the prism until finally it reach the eye of the observer. All right. Okay, draw your ray diagram now. And for those who want to show me your drawing, you can come up to the stage by click on this StreamYard link. Uh, so you can join me in the studio. Last week, I was accompanied by Kwang Yu, but I don't see him today. So if anyone wants to join me or share your answer with your friend, you can click on the StreamYard link here. All right. So are you done with your drawing? Boleh lukis tak the ray diagram? Okay, I'll give you a few more seconds to complete your drawing before I show you the correct 
path of the diagram. Okay. Okay, class, are you done with your drawing? Okay, if you're done, you can check with this answer. So first, we draw. This is the light enter from the objective lens. Okay, so it go to the first prism. Okay, and what happened here? Total, the first total internal reflection occurred. Okay, and when the light uh, reached this boundary, again, the second total internal reflection occurred and it moved to the second prism down here. And again here, total internal reflection occur for the third time and for the fourth time. So total internal reflection occurs four times, twice in each prism. And finally, it reached the eyes of the observer. Okay, so this is the complete drawing on the uh, light ray entering the binocular. Okay, so you may complete your drawing as I show to you now. And please be aware, don't forget to draw the arrow as well. All right. Okay, so are you done with your drawing? Can we move to the next slide? Next question, class. Okay, very good. Okay, so we move to the next question. Okay, now question D. Okay, question D. You are given table 8. Okay, table 8 shows the characteristic of three lenses. Danish Hisham, we are starting uh, right now. Okay, I am now discussing question six. Uh, for those who are uh, not from SMK Baganjaya, you can get the question which we are discussing now from the link which I prepare in the comment section in this video. And not in the live chat section, it is placed in the comment section on this video. Okay, you can go to the question after we finish these classes later on and can try the exercises as well. Okay, Danish Hisham, thank you for joining us today. Okay, so we continue with question D, class. Okay, again, this is table eight. It shows objective lens is used in the binocular so that the objective can be seen clearer. Okay, so you are given three choices of lens, P, Q, and R, and these are the two characteristics given. First is the focal length, for P is 1 cm, for Q is 10 cm, and for R is 100 cm. And also given the diameter of the lens where P has a small diameter and Q and R, uh, Q and R has a big uh, diameter. All right. So based on table 8, state the suitable characteristic of the lens to be used as an objective lens. So you can highlight this uh, statement. Okay, this information state the suitable characteristic of the lens to be used as the objective lens. Give one reason for the suitable characteristic. Actually, this question 6 is an example of question 8 in section A, paper 2. Okay, class. Okay, so uh, D1. First, we talk about the focal length of the lens. So, you are given two choices. And in this question, please don't mention about the value, but you just need to mention either the focal length need to be long or need to be short. Okay, long or short. So which one is your choice? Long or short focal length? And what is the reason of choosing a long or short focal length? Yes, Bao Yutong said long. How about the rest? What do you say? The focal length must be long or must be short. Anjang ke pendek, which one is a better choice? So we choose, we choose long or longer focal length. Okay, Chan Min Suan, it is long, Min Si, long, longer focal length, not short. Okay, the focal length should be longer. 
Okay, why must be longer? Kenapa nak pilih yang panjang? You talk, what is your reason of choosing a longer focal length? Anybody can think the reason? Why must choose long focal length for the objective lens? Yes, so it is to give a higher magnification. So later the image produced will be bigger in size, higher magnification. Okay, it should be long to give a higher magnification on the image produced later on. Okay, how about the diameter? Okay, now talking about the diameter. Diameter means the thickness. Okay, refers to the thickness of the lens. So it better to be small or better to be big. Small mean thin and big mean thick. Okay, diameter, small or big. You don't say thick. Tak ada thick di sana, you must say big or small. If given thick or thin, then you write thick or thin. But now it is even small or big. So we either say small or big. Okay. Uh, so which one? Big, yes. So tengok big or small, yes, it should be big. Yes, sleepy. Sleepy is Lee Song Jun, right? <laughs> okay, Swan so also say big, yes. Okay, uh, Jinji also say big, yes, it should be big. Or you can say bigger. Okay, why the diameter must be big? Kenapa kena besar? Big. Any reason for choosing a big diameter of lens? Uh, Jiong Sui, thank you for responding. Yes, it is true. Big. Why you choose a big diameter of lens? To give you what? So, to refract more light you can say to refract more light or to produce brighter image okay to produce more light uh, sorry to refract more light or to produce brighter image so now we agree with long focal length and big diameter so which lens is a better choice uh, is it p is it q or is it r i think the answer is very obvious now P, Q, O, R. Yes, very good. It is lens R. Yes, lens R, very good. Okay, lens R with the focal length of 100 and diameter of lens is B. So we choose lens R. Yes, you can uh, you can just say R. It's enough. Okay, lens R or just say R. All right. So by this, we finish with question six. Okay. So now let's move to the next question, question seven. Okay, question seven is an essay question. Example of essay question number nine. Okay, so in this question, you are given two diagram, diagram 9.1 and diagram 9.2. Okay, both diagrams show a convex lens. Convex lens. Uh, this is U1 for diagram 9.1. What is U1 class? U1 is object distance. Okay. And this is the object distance for diagram 9.2. And this is the position of image shown by both diagram. Okay, H1 is the height of the image in diagram 9.1. And H2 is the height of the image in diagram 9.2. Okay. So it say that real image with different height are produced. Okay, real image with different height are produced. Remember for lens, when the image are formed at the opposite side of the object, it is real. Okay, when the image is formed at the same side of the object for lens, so we say it is virtual. All right, so what is the question? First, what is meant by focal length? Uh, so what is the meaning of focal length? Guys, write your answer in the private chat. What is the meaning of focal length? Guan Heng D is convex lens. Which D you refer, uh, you mean? Okay, now we are discussing question 7A. What is meant by focal length? Okay, focal length. 
the later on uh guan hang don't be too fast we are now discussing uh a first so what is meant by focal length everyone uh jinjie said the distance between the principal focus and the optical center okay any other answer uh song jun say distance between lens distance between lens you only have one lens here for each diagram song jun okay uh, so which one uh, what is the meaning of focal length so the answer is distance from the focal point to the optical center okay Min Suan say distance between focal point and lens. Um, not very accurate, Min Suan. It is distance from the focal point to the optical center. Uh, where is the focal point? Focal point is the one that marked with F. Uh, F is the focal point. So the distance between F to the optical center, we call it as a focal length. Uh, Zuanzi said distance between the focal length, uh, the focal point and the surface of the mirror. Uh, not very accurate answer, Zuanzi. It's not the surface of the mirror. We call it as the optical center. Surface of the mirror not reach the optical center yet. Okay, because the optical center is at the middle of the lens. Okay, so it is distance from the focal point to the optical center. Okay. Okay, and then now we continue with question two. Okay, using diagram 9.1 and diagram 9.2 now to do the comparison. Okay, comparison. Compare the focal length of the lens. So look at diagram 9.1 and diagram 9.2 class. So what can you say about the focal length? So this is F, the focal point in diagram 9.1, and this is F for diagram 9.2. So are they the same? Or 9.1 longer or shorter than 9.2? What do you say? How do we compare the focal length of both lenses? Are they the same or are they different? If different, which one is longer? Which one is shorter? Okay, focal length. Same. Vinci said it is the same. Okay, you can see obviously, yes, the focal length is the same. Yes, very good, Dylan. It is same or you can say equal. Okay, another answer is equal, same or equal. Or you can say 9.1 equal to 9.2. All right. Okay, now how about the object distance? Okay, object distance, U1 and U2. Okay, we go back to the diagram. So this is the object distance. U1 in 9.1 and this is the object distance U2 in diagram 9.2. Uh, so which one is longer, which one is shorter? So you can say, yes, the object distance 9.1 less than 9.2. Okay, or 9.2 greater than 9.1. Okay, another way around. 9.1 less than 9.2 or we can say 9.2 greater than 9.1. All right. Okay. Very good, everyone. Okay. Now we go to the next question. Okay. Now compare the height of the image. Okay. Look at the height of the image H1 and H2. Okay. Height of image H1 or H2. So which one is greater? Which one is smaller? Okay, look at the height of the image, H1 and H2. So what can you say? So you can say that either H1 greater than H2. Yes, we see H1 greater than H2. Or you can mention about the diagram. Uh, here, the answer, I write to you the diagram. On 9.1 greater than 9.2. Or you can say H2 less than H.1 or 9.2 less than 9.1. Okay, either one. Mana-mana satu pun boleh. Yes, very good means one. Okay, I can now see one. Okay, now it's time for us to state the relationship. Relationship first between the object distance and the height of image. 
And second, to name the light phenomenon occurs in diagram 9.1 and diagram 9.2. Okay, class. So how we say what is the relationship between the object distance and the height of image? So what happened to the height of image when the object distance is increases? Uh, as you can see, U1 is shorter, U2 is longer. So when U2 is increases, what happened to the size of image? To the height of image? Yes, very good. Okay, we say you can write increase, decrease. Okay, you can say... Uh, 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 sorry, class, this is an essay question, right? Okay, for essay question, okay, uh, you write the answer in proper. Uh, object distance increases, height of image decreases. Okay, uh, object distance increases, height of image decreases. Okay, uh, this one you can write if this question is a structure question. Okay, uh, so this, uh, so you add the longer answer because this is an essay question. You say object distance increases, please add some more in the front and height of image decreases. All right. Okay. And number two, C2, name the light phenomenon occur in diagram 9.1 and diagram 9.2. Okay. So what is the light phenomenon occurs in diagram 9.1 and diagram 9.2? What light phenomenon occurs for lens? Okay, the keyword is lens. What light phenomenon occur in lenses? Is it reflection? Is it refraction? Or is it diffraction? Total internal reflection, which one? Which light phenomenon involved here? For lens in diagram 9.1 and diagram 9.2. Yes, we can see very good. It is refraction of light. Okay, or you can say refraction. So answer is refraction of light. Okay. Okay, I would like to remind you again the answer for uh, C1, uh, B1, B2, B3 and C1 for essay. We write together with the quantity stated. Okay, which one? Uh, Okay, for short answer, you can write the short answer in structure question. Yes, Guan Heng, very good, must be refraction. Yes, Jared, it is refraction. Okay, nice profile picture. Guan Heng, why don't you put your profile picture? Uh, put one good profile picture here. Okay. Okay, next, question 7D. Okay, question 7D, now the sketching. Okay, you have to sketch the ray diagram. Diagram 9.3, you are now given concave lens. Remember, class, please highlight. We are now given with concave lens. So this is the diagram, show the concave lens, diagram 9.3. And this is where we place the object at. The object is placed in between F and 2F. All right. And given the focal length is 2 cm, focal length is 2 cm and the light ray of the object passing through the lens using the light phenomenon in C2 mean the light passing through due to refraction. So first you have to sketch the ray diagram of the object to show an image form. So now please sketch your ray diagram for concave lens. Do you still remember how to draw the ray diagram for concave lens? Okay, so please draw your ray diagram now. Okay, I give you how long? One minute. I think one minute is too long. Okay, 30 seconds. In 30 seconds, please complete your ray diagram and mark where the position of the image is. And second, state three characteristic of the image form. Okay, those who are finished with the drawing, please type in the live chat the three characteristic of image form. Okay? okay, I give you one minute lah to settle this question D1 and D2. Okay, you may draw your ray diagram now and write the characteristic of image form for this concave lens. Okay? Okay, 
Okay, so are you done with your drawing? Can you share the characteristic of image form for this concave lens? Uh, Jinjie said virtual, enlarged and upright. Who else? Vinci said virtual, upright and diminished. All right. So far we have to answer here. Jinjie said virtual, enlarged and upright. While Vinci said virtual, upright and diminished. Uh, so which one later we check. The rest of you, what do you say about the characteristic of image? Okay, first, let's go to the sketching, uh, to the drawing. Okay, first, you draw a parallel ray from the object towards the optical center. Remember, this is a concave lens. Concave lens is a converged or a diverging lens. Was it a converging lens or was it a diverging lens? Or which one? Yes, concave lens is a diverging lens. Mean the diagram must diverge. Yes, we can see very good diverge. So you draw a light diverge. Diverge from the focal point at the front. So it shows this line has been diverged. Okay, second ray diagram from the object towards the optical center. Okay, towards the optical center. So where is the intersecting point of these two lines? Uh, so you can see it intersect somewhere here, okay, at the front of the lens. So this is where we draw the position of the image. And you can mark it as I. Okay, you can label the image as I. So this is how we show the ray diagram for the concave lens. Okay, so let's see which characteristic of image is correct. So now the image form at the same side of the object. So same side. So was it real or was it virtual? For lens, form at the same side is virtual. Okay, number one, virtual. Second, was it appear above the principal axis or below the principal axis? It is now formed above. Okay, so we say it is upright. And then look at the size. You can compare the size with the object. The size has been diminished, okay, or smaller. So these are the three correct characteristics which you can write. It is virtual, upright, and diminished. Means one, how do you roll? How do you draw the ray diagram? Real inverted magnified that one if this lens is a convex lens. Uh, but now we are given with concave lens. So please be aware what kind of lens you are given with. Okay, means one, that characteristic if you are given with convex lens. Real inverted magnified. Okay, uh, please don't be careless. All right. So class, we continue with the long essay E. Okay, long essay 10 mark E. You are given diagram 9.4 show lens M is going to be used as an eyepiece lens to pair with a lens as an objective lens to build an astronomical telescope. So this is the situation you are given with. You are asked to explain the suggestion to the objective lens to be used and modification need to be done to the lens M to build a high power of astronomical telescope. So you can highlight what is the aim of this question. Okay, we are going to build a high power of astronomical telescope. Okay, so this is the missing objective lens and this is the given lens M. Okay. So this is what you should consider in your explanation. First, type of lens used as your objective lens. So what type of lens? Is it convex or concave? Uh, which one to use? Second, the focal length of the objective lens compared to the eyepiece. Uh, so which one should be longer? The focal length of the objective lens or the focal length of the uh, lens M? Number three, Magnitude of linear magnification. The magnification better to be big or better to be small? OK, 
Okay, number four, the normal adjustment. Normal adjustment is uh, the distance between the objective lens and uh, lens M. And number five, the diameter of the objective lens used must be big or must be small in diameter. All right. So first and foremost, as usual, what we need to do is form your table. Okay, this is a long essay, 10 questions. So first of all, form your table. Okay, on the left side, you can say modification or characteristic. And in the second column on the right is the explanation or the reason. Okay. So first modification, what type of lens we must use to build the objective lens class? Was it convex or was it concave? Uh, so type your answer in the private chat. Convex or concave? Okay, let's see who write the answer first for type of lens. Was it convex or was it concave? Convex, Song Jun say convex. Are you not sure why you have put the question mark there? <laughs> Min Suan said convex. Okay, anybody else? With Kevin C also say convex. So the answer is convex. Okay. So first type of lens is convex. Yes. Okay, Jell also say convex. Yes, very good. Osas, who is this Osas01? Can you identify yourself? Yes, it is convex. So why choosing convex lens? How to explain why you say it is convex? The reason is? Anyone? The reason for choosing convex lens or type of lens, we choose convex. The reason is jack. Which jack is this? To receive light from distant object. Yes, Jack, it is convex. And the reason is to receive light from distant object. Because for telescope, right, our object is placed at the infinity, right, very far away from the telescope itself. So we choose convex to receive. So light travel in a parallel way, enter the telescope. So the reason is receive light from distant object or receive light from further object. Magnified image form, that is a reason for another modification. Okay. Okay, so second modification. So second modification, what should you write? What is the second aspect just now? Okay. So the focal length, okay, focal length of the objective lens must be greater, okay, must be greater or must be longer than the eyepiece lens. So this is the second modification or the second characteristic we much uh, use. The focal length of the objective lens is greater than the eyepiece of lens M. Okay, why? Why objective lens must have, uh, why the focal length of the objective lens must be longer uh, what is the reason? So that uh, the image form will be real, inverted and diminished. Okay. So the image form will be real, inverted and diminished. Remember for telescope, the image will form twice. Okay. The image will form twice. The first image will form by the objective lens okay and for objective lens the image form must be real inverted and diminished and to get this characteristic of image the focal length of the objective lens must be longer longer than the eyepiece and the first image will be the object of the eyepiece okay are you clear class the first image formed by the objective lens will become the object of the eyepiece. Okay, so later on, the eyepiece will form the second image, which is also the final image of the telescope. All right, 
So we go to the third characteristic. Okay, third characteristic, we take, uh, we talk about the magnification. The magnification must be big. Okay, the magnitude of the linear magnification must be big. Okay, uh, so the reason is to enlarge the image. Uh, Jinjie, this is the uh, reason where you should place the reason magnified image form. Okay, it is to enlarge or to magnify the image. All right. And the fourth characteristic is about the normal adjustment. Okay, the normal adjustment, which means the distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece. Where, where we want to place the objective lens and the eyepiece. How further we must place them. Okay, what is the length we must place them? So the normal adjustment D is FO plus FE. Okay, FO plus FE. D is the distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece. So how further we must place them by adding the focal length of the objective lens plus the focal length of the eyepiece. Let's say the focal length of the uh, objective lens is 15 centimeter. Let's say 15 centimeter. And the focal length of the eyepiece is 10 centimeter. So your total up will be 25, which means the objective lens and the eyepiece must place at a distance of 25 centimeter from one and another. Okay, are you clear, class? Uh, this is what we say as a normal adjustment for telescope. So by this, the final image will be formed at infinity. Okay, when we place uh, the objective lens and the eyepiece at this distance, the second image of the final image appear will be formed at infinity. All right. And the last characteristic is the diameter of the objective lens. As the previous question, it must be big. Okay, the diameter must be big. Okay, why must have a big diameter? You remember the previous question, what is the reason of having a big diameter? So to produce brighter image, okay, to produce brighter image or to refract more light, okay, to refract more light or to produce brighter image, okay. So I give you a few moments to to get the answer or if you can't catch now, uh, you can go back to the video later on or you can take the screenshot and uh, jot down the correct modification and explanation. Look at the black hole, one hair, you don't have to reach the black hole terlalu jauh, it was too far. Okay, okay, next. Okay, question eight. It is now 10.49 a.m. and we are having 75%, 78% with us now. All right. Class, question eight. Okay, now move to electricity. Okay. So you are given diagram 10.1. Okay, diagram 10.1. It shows three identical bulb. So bulb A, we have bulb B and bulb C. They are identical. All right. Two bulb and emitter are placed across PQ. So you can see this is junction PQ. We place bulb A, bulb B and an emitter there. And then we have junction RS where we place bulb C and an emitter. And the dry cell and the switch is on top of the circuit. Okay, and we have one statement here. Assume the internal resistance of the dry cell is zero. Okay, assume the internal resistance of the dry cell is zero. Okay, so first, what is meant by internal resistance in a dry cell? Okay, what is meant by internal resistance in a dry cell? Okay, type it now in the private chat. Internal resistance. Okay, internal resistance. What is meant by internal resistance? Anyone? 
Can you type your answer in the private chat? What is meant by internal resistance? Okay. So that's why I suggest you better try on this question first before we do the discussion. Okay, so it will, bo uh, it will be more efficient for you. Okay. So again, what is meant by internal resistance? It is a resistance due to the electrolyte. Okay, that resists the flow of electron in the dry cell. Okay, so the answer is, it is a resistance due to the electrolyte that resists the flow of electrons in the dry cell. Uh, so this is meant by internal resistance of a battery or a dry cell. All right. Okay, second question, B1. Okay, B1 is a comparison. Compare number of bulbs across PQ and RS. Second, compare the magnitude of current flow across PQ and RS. And number three, compare the total resistance across PQ and RS. Okay. So how do we compare? Internal resistance related to electromotive force. Yes, one hang when you are about to calculate the uh, EMF. Okay, we put the internal resistance in the formula of E equal to V plus IR. Okay. Okay, B1, how do we compare number of bar across PQ? In PQ, we have two bar. In RS, we have one bar. So how to compare? So we can say number of bar across PQ is greater. Okay, number of bar across PQ is greater or higher okay, than that of RS. You can say number of bar across PQ is greater enough. Okay, second comparison. The magnitude of current flow across PQ and RS. So how to check on the magnitude? You can check on the reading of the emitter. Okay, let's take a look at the emitter reading. So this is the emitter reading for junction PQ and this is the emitter reading for junction RS. So which one has a higher, which one has a lower reading? Yes, so you can say the magnitude of current flow across PQ is lower, okay, or smaller than RS. Or you can say the other way around. Magnitude of current flow across RS is greater or higher, all right? Okay, and number three, what about the total resistance across PQ and RS? Remember, total resistance must be opposite to the current magnitude of current. So what can we say about the total resistance flow? Yes, the total resistance across PQ is greater or higher than in RS. Or you can say the other way around, the total resistance across RS is lower or smaller than in PQ. Okay, uh, so this is how we make a comparison on the number of bar, the magnitude of current and the total resistance for PQ and RS. Okay, okay, now let's move to question B. Now is to write the relationship. Okay, the relationship. First, you write the relationship of the number of bar and the magnitude of current. Okay. And second, to write the relationship between the resistance and the magnitude of current. Okay. First, write the relationship between number of bar and magnitude of current. Second, resistance and magnitude of Current. Okay, everyone, how to write the relationship? So first, you can say the greater the number of bar, the lower or the smaller the magnitude of current. Or you can say uh, the number of bar increases 
the magnitude of current decreases. Okay, I repeat, you can also say the number of bulb increases, uh, the magnitude of current decreases or the other way around. Okay, and the second relationship, how to say the second relationship, the greater or the higher the resistance, the lower or the smaller the magnitude of current. Or you can say uh, when the resistance increases, so the magnitude of current decreases. Okay, I repeat, uh, when the resistance increases, so the magnitude of current decreases. Okay, class, that's one is for B2, how we write the relationship. Okay, next, we go to question C. A piece of copper wire is connected across bug B in diagram 10.1. Okay, now we place a copper wire and we connect across bug B. Okay, this is what B, bug B. So we place a copper wire across this bug. You are asked to explain what will happen to the emitter reading and the brightness of the bug. Okay, what happened to the emitter reading and the brightness of the bulb? Okay, this is an explanation question for marks. Okay, emitter reading for both. Okay, and brightness of bulb for all. So, how we write the explanation for this question? So, number one, you talk about bulb B first. What happened to bulb B when we place a copper wire, we connect a copper wire across bulb B? So what happened to bulb B? Bulb B will not light up, okay, because a short circuit will occur there. Okay, bulb B does not light up. Second, what happened? So by this, the total resistance across PQ will be decreases. So when bulb B went off, mean the total resistance across PQ, because now we have only bulb A left. So the total resistance will be decreases. So the reading of emitter will be higher. It shows a greater current flow through this uh, PQ. Okay. And the brightness of bulb A and C will be the same. Okay, now brightness of bulb A and bulb C will be the same. Why? Because now the emitter reading of X and Y is the, sorry, it is not X and Y, of A and C. Okay, it's supposed to be emitter reading, uh, okay, emitter reading of X and Y is the same. Okay, when B went off, now A and C is in parallel okay in parallel so when a and c is in parallel and they are identical so the voltage flow in a and b is equal to the voltage supply by the dry cell okay so this will give the same amount of current flow towards a and c and giving a same reading on the emitter x and emitter y Okay, so class, are you clear with the explanation? So first we say what happened to bulb B and then you talk about the internal resistance in PQ and uh, next is the brightness of A and C and the emitter reading of X and Y. Okay, okay now we go to the D, question D. In diagram 10.2, Okay, diagram 10.2 now you are given a torchlight. Okay, so this is the diagram of the torchlight we are given. Inside here we have a dry cell. At the front we have the bulb and this is the reflector. Okay, and down here is the contact switch. So what is the question? You are required to modify. Okay, modify this torchlight so it will light up brighter. Okay, it will light up brighter. Thank you very much uh, Danish for responding. Okay, so how we do the modification, you are given by this guidance. The number of dry cells, internal resistance of the cell must be high or low. Number of dry cell must be increases or must be decreases. Power of the bulb, 
A must be higher or lower surface of the reflector. Okay, surface of the reflector. And then the position of the bulb, where to place the bulb at. All right. So again, this is a 10 essay, a 10 marks essay question. First and foremost, form your table. All right. So on the left side is the modification we need to be done and the explanation is on the right column. Okay, first, number of dry cell. Okay, you can say increase the number of dry cell. Mean use more number of dry cell. Just now it showed two, mean we use more than two, three, four, and so on. Okay, why? What is the reason of increasing the number of dry cell? So it will supply us a greater voltage. Okay, it will supply a greater voltage to the torch light. Second, the internal resistance of the cell. Indeed, it must be, it must be low, low internal resistance. Why? So that it will cause a less voltage drop. Okay. So less total, low total, inter, uh, low internal resistance inside the cell will cause a less voltage drop. Means more voltage can be supplied to the to the torch light. Okay, then the bulb must use high power. Okay, high power of bulb. For what? To produce more light. Remember, in your explanation, you cannot say. Uh, to have a brighter light because it already stated in the question. Whatever stated in the question, you cannot write as your reason. Change it to another, another words. So we can say to produce more light. All right. And then number four, the surface of the reflector. So the surface of the reflector, you can say shiny. Okay, shiny surface reflector. Okay, why must be shiny surface reflector? Because a shiny surface is a good reflector. Or you can say can reflect no light, can reflect most of the light. All right. And the final characteristic, where to place the bulb at? So for torch light, it is the best to place the bulb at the focal point of the reflector. Okay, place it exactly at the focal point of the reflector. So what is the reason of doing so? To get bright light in parallel. Okay, so it will produce a bright light in parallel. All right, so this is the modification done for the torch light. Remember, for this essay, it doesn't ask you to choose. Okay, you are not given a P, Q, R, and S for you to choose which one is a better choice. So we just state about the modification and explanation for each, okay? So you don't have to rewrite back all your modification and explanation enough by showing them in this table. So you can get maximum 10 marks for this question. Okay, class. Okay, so we continue. It is now question nine. For those in five citrine, I believe your BM classes is about to start at uh, 11 a.m. So uh, you may leave if you wish to, but later on, you please come back to this video to get the answer for the remaining question, okay? For those in 5A and 5B, I hope, uh, I hope that you stay to the end of this lesson, all right? So without further delay, we continue with question nine. All right, class? So are you doing good so far? Or you need to take a break. Nak rehat sekejap ke? Uh, okay, we took, uh, we took a short break for one minute. Okay, and then we continue with question nine. Okay, again, for those who are not from Bagan Jaya, thank you for uh, watching this uh, revision session. And you can get all the questions which I discussed today in the comment section of this video. Okay, you can go to get the question later on. I have pinned the link for you to try them, all right? Okay, so question nine is about electromagnets, all right? Electromagnet, 
Uh, so this is the related diagram, diagram 8.1. Okay, you can see this is a circuit where we place our cardboard and this side. And this is a compass T, compass S, and this is the iron filings we spread on the on top of the cardboard. Okay, and the switch is now is in an open position. Remember, when the switch is in open position, open means the switch is off. Okay. When the switch is closed, mean the switch is on, switch on. Switch open means switch is off. Switch close means switch is on. All right. Okay, first, it say when the switch in diagram uh, 8.1 is on, so now mean we close this switch. Indicate with an arrow the direction of the current in the circuit. Okay, I mean you have to draw the arrow along the circuit in which direction the current flow from. Second, draw the magnetic field pattern on the cardboard. So how to draw the magnetic field pattern? You learn about the rule before. And number three, indicate with an arrow the direction of compass needle of the compass T. Okay, first, in which direction the current will flow? Okay, we will go back to the diagram. Okay, please take a look at this side. This is how we place the cell. So, mean the positive plate is down here. Up here is the negative. So, current flow from positive. So, the current will come out from this direction. Okay, when we switch on this switch, I mean, we connect this switch, so current flow in this direction. So on the cardboard, we say the current is flow out, okay, flow out of the cardboard. So how to draw? Uh, it is shown by the red arrow here. So either you draw at this side or you can draw at the upper side. Okay, so this is for number one how we draw the direction of current flow in the circuit, okay? Next, draw the magnetic field pattern on the cardboard. So how to draw the magnetic field pattern? So now we know the current flow out of paper. And this is a straight wire, a straight wire conductor. So how to determine the magnetic field pattern? So which rule or which law we can apply here? You can imagine this is the conductor in a vertical position and we held with our right hand grip. Okay, right hand grip. Our thumb pointing to the direction of current. Now the current flow out. So our thumb should be pointing upwards. Okay, thumb should be pointing upwards and you see your curl finger now in which direction it rotate at rotate at anti-clockwise or rotate in a clockwise direction clockwise or anti-clockwise uh, please indicate now clockwise or anti-clockwise so first we draw the magnetic field pattern by show the circular line and then you determine the direction so the direction, if you look at your curl finger, the direction is anti-clockwise. Okay, the direction will be, yes, Vin C, very good, it is anti-clockwise. Draw the magnetic field pattern and show the direction of anti-clockwise rotation. Okay, and number three, okay, indicate with an arrow the direction of compass needle of the compass T. So where is compass T? So the needle pointed to where? Pointed to the right, pointed to the left, or point upwards or point downwards. Okay, which direction? Number three, compass T. Compass T is placed down here. So by this, uh, so the direction of the compass supposed to be pointing to the pointing to the right, okay, pointing to the right. As our magnetic field is in an anti-clockwise rotation, yes, we can see very good, it is anti-clockwise and compass T pointing to the, pointing to the right, okay. Next, K 
Okay, name the rule used to determine the direction of magnetic field in 8.1. Now, just now I say what rule we are using, what rule we are applying here to determine the magnetic field direction. So, what is the name of the rule again, class? Uh, please type on the live chat the name of the rule we apply here. Yes, very good. Okay, very good. Means one, means C. It is right hand grip rule. Okay, right hand grip rule is the name of the rule to determine the direction of magnetic field. Okay, very good. Right hand grip rule. Okay, question nine. Okay, so that's uh, question 9C. Now 9C. 9C is now the application. Okay, you are given three choices of electric motor as shown in this diagram. This is X. So it shows the fan blade and this is the semicircular shape of permanent magnet. And we have a number of turns of coil here is 50 turns. And it applies three number of battery. Okay. And four electric motor y this is the fan blade and this is the shape of the permanent magnet it is a rectangular shape and the number of turns of coil is 10 all right while for electric motor z uh, this is the fan blade again and this is the shape of the permanent magnet it is given rectangular and the number of turn of coil is 50 and it used three battery okay for electric motor Y, it uses a single battery. Satu battery saja. Okay. So, uh, these three electric fan is used to build a small portable fan. Portable means mobile. You can bring the fan uh, anywhere it is mobile. can be shifted. Okay. Portable. So, first, number of turn of course. So, we have two choices. 10 and 50 mean... Uh, small and great number of turns is smaller or greater number of the remember don't write the value don't write 10 don't write 50 okay write either higher or lower smaller or greater all right so number of turn which one want to use uh, more number of turn or less number of turn so we do we say greater yes greater okay greater or higher bigger okay greater or higher why what is the reason of choosing a greater or higher number of turn of coil for what dylan yes greater for what what is the reason for choosing a greater number of turns of coil it is to yes increase the strength of magnetic field okay to increase the strength of magnetic field or you can say stronger magnetic field okay stronger magnetic field or to increase strength of magnetic field okay second now number of battery use okay number of battery use uh, sama juga greater higher smaller lower more or less. Jangan tuli more or less. Okay, I always advise you, uh, please try to avoid to use more or less in your um, answer. Okay, so number of battery, it is better to be greater or better to be smaller. Yes, it is uh, greater or higher. Okay, why? Why must choose greater number of battery what is the reason of choosing a battery of greater number to produce a greater or higher current so the current flow to the circuit will be greater okay higher or greater current okay Dylan say more voltage produced. Okay, more voltage produced. Okay, so this one is electromagnetism. Normally in electromagnetism, we talk about the strength of the magnetic field and the strength of the current flow in the, in the coil. Okay, uh, for electricity, yes, we mentioned about the voltage. 
All right. Uh, so number three, how about the shape of the permanent magnet? Okay, just now you are using, uh, you are given two choices, either to use the semicircular shape or the rectangular shape. Uh, so which one is a better choice? Semicircular or rectangular shape? Uh, which one? Yes, very good. We choose a semicircular shape of permanent magnet. Okay, why? Why we are choosing a semicircular shape of permanent magnet instead of the rectangular shape? Yes, uh, Xuan Ling, it is semi, semicircle, semicircular. And the reason is in C to produce radial magnetic field. Okay, any other reason? Produce radial magnetic field. Any other answer? Okay, Vinci said to produce radial magnetic field. How about you? What do you say? Okay, so it is to form a uniform rotation of the fan blade. Okay, to form a uniform rotation of the fan blade. Or you can say so that constant force acting on the fin bit. Constant force mean, uh, refers to the radial magnetic field as Vinci stated just now, okay? So the reason is to produce constant force acting on the fin blade or so that the fin blade rotate uniformly, okay? So this is the reason why we are choosing a semicircular shape of permanent magnet. To prevent leakage of current, it is um, it is not accurate, swelling. Okay, it is to form constant force or to ensure the blade rotate uniformly. All right. Okay. And number four, determine the most suitable design of electric motor. So which one is a better choice? X, Y, O, Z. Uh, X, Y, O, Z. Uh, it is obviously that we can choose. Yes, we choose electric fan X, okay, electric fan X. Okay, uh, so now we come to the final question for today, question 10. Okay, yes, Dylan, very good, it is electric fan X. Okay, so I hope you are doing good so far. So now we come to the final question for today, question 10. Okay, again, it is to do with electromagnetism, all right? And now we have diagram 10.1 and diagram 10.2. Okay, diagram 10.1, you can see uh, this is the coil. Now we have a coil. This is the number of turn of coil. And this is for uh, 10.2. You can see it is more number of turn of coil. And here we have a cardboard. We spread an iron filings on top of the cardboard. And this is the pattern of the magnetic field produced by the iron filings in diagram 10.1. While you can show this is the pattern of the iron filings in diagram 10.2. And down here is the emitter reading for both diagram. Okay. Uh, so you have, uh, you have to look at the diagram and observe what is the similarity or the differences in both diagram, all right? Okay, so now the first question A, what is meant by magnetic field? Now remember for essay question, the first question must um, normally ask about the definition or the concept applied uh, throughout the questions. So what is meant by magnetic field? Anyone, do you remember? What is meant by magnetic field? Okay, you can share your answer in the um, comment section. Yes, it is a region in which a magnetic material experiences a magnetic force. Or you can say it is a region in which a current carrying conductor experience a magnetic force. Okay, that is meant by magnetic field. A region in which a current carrying conductor or a magnetic material experience a magnetic force. Okay, next question B. 
Okay, now is the comparison. Using diagram 10.1 and 10.2, compare the number of turns of the coil. Uh, so you can look the number of turns of coil, the pattern of the iron filings, and the angle of deflection of the emitter indicator. So these are the three comparison you must highlight and write them in proper way. Okay, first, how do we compare the number of turns of coil? Uh, so first, you can say the number of turns of coil in diagram B. Uh, diagram B uh, refers to diagram 10.2. Okay, uh, diagram B mean diagram 10.2 is greater than in diagram A. Diagram A refers to diagram 10.1. Okay. Uh, so, number of turns of coil in diagram 10.2 is greater. Okay, greater. Second, the pattern of the iron filing. So, how do we say about the pattern? Okay, the pattern. You can say both have a semi, uh, both have a circular pattern, but they are different in the density. So, which one is denser, which one is less dense? So, you can say, the pattern of the iron filings formed on the cardboard shown in diagram B is denser. Okay, is denser than that in diagram 10.1. Again, diagram B refers to 10.2. Diagram A refers to 10.1. Okay, and the third comparison is an angle of deflection of the emitter indicator. Okay, so you can check the emitter reading, which one show a higher deflection, which one show a lower deflection. So we say the deflection of emitter indicator show in diagram B or diagram 10.2 is bigger or greater or higher, right? Then that show in diagram A or diagram 10.1, right? Uh, so you can uh, screenshot the answer or later you can come back to the video to get the full answer. All right. So we move to question C. Okay, now question C, uh, the relationship. All right. So just now we made the comparison. Now it's time to make the relationship. How do we relate? Number one, make a relationship, state the relationship between the strength of the magnetic field and the patterns of the iron filing. So how can you relate the strength of the magnetic field and the pattern? So you just combine the answer and we write them like this. The denser the pattern of the iron filings, the greater. So the greater the strength of the magnetic field. Or you can say the denser the pattern of the iron filings, the stronger the magnetic field feel okay or, or you can say uh, when the density of the pattern of the iron filing increases the strength of the magnetic field increases okay uh, and second compare the relation uh, sorry state the relationship between the strength of the magnetic field and the number of turns of the coil so how do we relate this so we can say the number of turns of coil increases, the strength of magnetic field increases. Okay, or you can say uh, the number of turns of the coil greater, so the strength of the magnetic field is greater. All right, so this is how we write a correct relationship between these mm, parameters. Okay, class. So that's all to do with C1 and C2, the relationship. So we go to the final question D. Now you are, uh, this is not a final question yet, sorry, diagram 10.3. Now you are given uh, two thin copper strip, PQ and RS, which is connected to a circuit. So this is a new diagram given in question D. PQ and RS is a thin copper strips, okay? And they are connected to this circuit, okay? 
so what is the question really? Explain what happened to PQ and RS when the switch is on. Okay, so PQ and RS is a current carrying conductor. We place them in parallel position. And this is how the, they are connected at. So if you look at the circuit, current flow from this position when the switch is closed, current flow in this position means it will enter S. Current will enter S flow to R. Okay. Current enter S to R. Okay. And at this side, okay, how the current flow mean the current flow in the opposite direction from P to Q. All right. So how do we explain? First, when a current flow, a magnetic field is formed. Okay. So this is what happened when once the switch is closed. Current flow so magnetic field is formed around the current carrying conductor of PQ and RS. And it will form a force. There will be a force acting in both strip PQ and RS as shown in this diagram. Okay, this arrow show the current flow in PR. It flow from S to R. And for this strip PQ, current flow from P to Q. So you can say the current flow in opposite direction. And this is the magnetic field pattern. Again, we can use right-hand grip rule. For RS, the magnetic field pattern is anti-clockwise since the current flow uh, out, okay, out of the plane flow above. And for PQ, uh, the current flow into, flow into the, fl uh, the plane so the direction of magnetic field is clockwise. Uh, so you can see uh, this is the force acting on both strip. Okay, so then what can we say? The flow of current in the copper strip is in the opposite direction. Okay, this is point number two. And then the direction of magnetic field between the two thin strip of copper are in the same direction. Okay, at the center, you can see the magnetic field is flow in the same direction at the center, which means that a stronger magnetic field is produced at the center. So stronger magnetic field produced at the center, it will push. It will push both strips so they will repel. So they will repel. So the strip move from a stronger region towards a weaker region. So in the end, both strip will be repelled. Bell. Okay, uh, so we say this will produce stronger magnetic field in the region between the two strips and they will repel each other. Okay, so this is how we explain what happened to strip PQ and RS when the switch is on. Okay, uh, so that goes for D for marks. Okay, so I think we've come to the final question. Uh, question E, uh, this is diagram 12.4, uh, 10.4, okay? Uh, so you are given an electric motor, okay? Now we are given a motor supply with 12 volt of AC current, okay? You can see there are two slip ring there, so we know it is connected to an AC current, okay? First, explain how the motor is able to rotate. Uh, so this question asks you to explain the principle of working of an AC motor. So how does AC motor works? Uh, okay, so this is the diagram show how the catapult field are produced. Okay, first, when the power supply is switched on, so we say the flow of current in the coil form a magnetic field. Okay. Next, the magnetic field due to the current carrying conductor and the magnetic field due to the permanent magnet interact. Mean there will be a combination of magnetic field between the coil and the permanent wire. Okay, a uh, permanent magnet, sorry. So this will form a catapult field, all right? Uh, as, as stated in point number three. 
This cause a catapult field which is formed around each side of the coil. So finally, what happened? A pair of equal but opposite force is formed which rotate the armature. Uh, so you can see uh, the coil on the left side rotate upwards while the coil on the on the, the right side rotate downwards. So it will rotate in an uh, in a clockwise rotation. Okay, so it will rotate in a clockwise rotation. Okay, so this is how we explain uh, how the AC motor works. Okay, uh, so next, E2. Using a 12 volt AC power supply. Okay, now explain the modification. Okay, need to be done on the motor and the external circuit to be enabled the motor to be a DC. Okay, now we are given AC motor. Now, how to convert AC motor into a DC motor? And plus, it can rotate faster. So, there are two things we have to modify. First, change AC motor into DC motor. Second, we want to make the motor to rotate faster. Okay? So first, how to change AC to DC? If you remember, to change AC to DC, we must place a diode. Okay, we place a diode. So what is a diode? A uh, diode ini is an electronic component which allow current pathway in one direction only. So use a diode and a capacitor. Also, you can say use a rectification circuit. A uh, diode is a rectification circuit. Okay, why we use diode? So this is to change AC to DC. Okay, next, the slip ring we change into a commutator. Remember, slip ring is used in AC motor and in DC motor, we use a split ring commutator or you can say a commutator. All right, why? This is to reverse the direction of the current in the armature. Okay, to reverse the direction of current in the armature. Okay, next. Uh, how to make the motor rotate faster? So what can we do is increasing the number of turns. Okay, increase the number of turns, coil or increase the strength of magnetic field or you can say use an iron core or also we can use a thick wires uh, so all these will increase the strength of magnetic field so by that will increase the rotation of the motor okay uh, so the reason is to increase the strength of the force acting on the core so it can rotate faster Oh, sorry, uh, I go back to the slide again. Okay, so uh, on top is the, is the modification and below is the explanation. Okay, this question allocates six mark, right? Uh, so use a diode is the first point. Uh, so to change AC to DC, this is the reason. Second modification, replace slip ring with a commutator. And this is the reason to reverse the direction of current in the armature. Okay, the third modification, we can increase the number of turn or you can say increase the strength or you can say use an iron core or using a thick wire. And the reason is to increase the strength of the force. So modification number one, reason number one, modification number two, reason number two, modification number three and reason number two. Three. Okay, class. Uh, so I think that's all the question for today. Question six to question ten. Uh, we now is eleven thirty-five. So we have successfully discussed uh, five questions today as we planned. Uh, I would like to congratulate all of you who joined the session today. And if you miss any of the answer, you can go back to the video later on. And please, as last week, write down your name and your class on the comment section as it will be count as your attendance for today. Okay. 
so any last word from you before we end this session, you can type on the private chat. Again, I would like to thank you very, uh, thank everyone who joined this lesson today. And I hope you can plan and schedule your time wisely as you are the one who manage your time right now in this MCO period. Okay, so please don't take uh, any of this lesson for granted. Please follow every single lesson conducted by your teacher and do cooperate by uh, doing all the exercises given. Okay, we are about to help you, but you yourself must help your own self. Okay, so nobody can help you if you don't want to help yourself. Uh, Arif Hamizan, uh, do you do other class after this? Uh, Arif Amizan, you're from other school. Right? Okay, uh, actually, uh, this class is uh, I help for my students in Bagan Jaya uh, every Wednesday and Friday. And the class will be conducted in English because uh, in school I'm teaching them in English. Uh, for the online tuition I conducted with my group in Academy YouTuber, uh, you can follow us on every in every sunday okay in every sunday uh 2 30 pm uh, in academy youtuber uh, that class will be conducted in both bahasa and uh, english uh, that one also open for public uh, but if you want to join my class with my student in Maganjaya every wednesday and friday also no problem and uh, the exercises we are discussing in this lesson you can get them from the comment section in the video okay so after this live stream ended you can go back to the video and get the exercises as well okay uh, so anything else okay bagan jaya student again please um, don't forget to come back to the video and write your name in your class as for your attendance today okay everyone that's all for today again thank you and have a good day ahead and stay safe, stay healthy, okay? Uh, Assalamualaikum and bye. See you again this Friday, okay? Thank you.